Today is a good day. That the Indian government is directly interfering in Canada. This is a very serious uh, allegation. I'm John, welcome. And today we are going to break this talking head ice by looking at Justin Trudeau's latest ploy. Now, I'm not going to go deep into what led up to what we saw yesterday, but we all have a pretty good understanding. Trudeau is the master of throwing people under the bus, but I think he might just have gone a little too far. We are also going to look at how Jagmeet Singh plays into all this because he actually dropped a little bomb that got rather grossly overlooked by both the mainstream media and people on social media. So let's get right into the whole Justin Trudeau announcement yesterday. Now, some of you may have noticed that of all the party leaders, Trudeau was the only one who did not tweet a Thanksgiving message to Canadians. Everyone else did it. Of course, everyone kind of knew what that all had to do with. I mean, the guy must be stressed out like crazy given the mutiny that he has on his hands, as well as the $400 million scandal looming over his head. It's a lot of pressure. So what did he do? Well, he took a page out of an old playbook, the old smokescreen playbook. You see, 26 years ago, a middle-aged politician was having a real good time and met a very, very attractive intern who he invited into his office. There's lipstick being smoked smeared where it shouldn't be smeared, cigars came into play, a whole lot of unwanted attention came his way, but he met with a windfall. That windfall being that just a few months after his little affair in office got discovered, a few not so nice people on the other side of the world decided to bomb some of his embassies. Now, of course, that's going to demand retribution, but given the situation that he was in, he chose to not just dole out revenge, but dole out severe justice. I'm talking about Bill Clinton. I'm talking about his affair with Monica Lewinsky. It was the perfect situation for him to divert attention away from himself. Because Clinton knew, and no matter how much Republicans despise Democrats, the one thing Republicans despise even more than Democrats are terrorists. And that's the one thing that could unite the entire front and divert attention away from what it is he's going through. And I guess Trudeau thought, well, hmm, let's see. It's kind of one of my things to just throw someone randomly under the bus to save my own skin. Just ask Jody Wilson-Raybould or Anthony Rhoda and they will tell you Trudeau doesn't play nicely when it comes to having to look out for his own interests. And now he may have done that to the wrong people. You see, Trudeau was counting on the fact that the very Canadians who are upset at all of his scandals, who can't wait to see him out, are the same people who are completely frustrated with the out-of-control immigration we're coming by way of India. Well, he's not entirely wrong. There is a lot of frustration. It's, very, it's more than palpable. The one problem is he went about it all the wrong way, and everybody can see right through the veneer. They can see right what this is all actually about. It's looking like Trudeau's about to realize the hardest way possible that what you reap is what you sow. The news of Canada and India's division is barely two days old and already we're seeing some huge ripple effects. First of which being that we are already seeing bomb threats against flights coming to and from Canada to India. Uh, this even resulted in one Air India flight having to be grounded in the Caliwit for safety reasons. And this is where Trudeau is probably coming to realize that all those years of pandering to India and just opening the floodgates is coming back to bite him right in the ass because aside from all these bomb threats, we are now being assailed by the Indian media. Just take a look at this. The Indian media is painting Canada in a very negative light. This is not the type of media we want, but they're all piling on us and they've been doing this all weekend long. But this also brings us to Jagmeet Singh. And it is very important we talk about this because Jagmeet Singh has put on a press conference in which he called for sanctions against Indian it's diplomats. False. Allegation. I asked you about the sanctions that you want to put forward. How do you balance that against Canada's economic interests and suggesting severe sanctions when that would have potentially devastating effects uh, in Canada's economy? I thank you for the opportunity to clarify. I mentioned very severe sanctions on, on Indian diplomats. Uh, Policy. So specifically on the diplomats, given the fact, I mean, let's just take a moment. We got the RCMP that said that Indian diplomats were hiring criminal elements 
to shoot at Canadians. Pretty serious. And given how serious that is, I can't see why we would do anything other than put in place severe sanctions on those diplomats, on Indian diplomats. Given their, the allegations that they were involved in, in basically getting folks to shoot at Canadians, at their homes, at their businesses. So yeah, we've got to take very serious measures, but we should also work in collaboration with our allies. There are similar circumstances. There is uh, an attempted assassination that's linked to the Indian government in the United States. We need to, of course, work with the United States. There's similar scenarios that have uh, played out in the United Kingdom. So it's clear that we need to work with our allies to put pressure on India. But there's got to be accountability. The Indian government has to be held to account. The Modi government has to be held to account. And we all need to be unified as Canadian leaders. All of us have to be united in denouncing Modi and making sure we protect Canadians and put their safety first and foremost. Thank you so much. Saying whether or not you your have now, if you can read between the lines, you'll see that this is very biased a very biased call to action. It's a flagrant abuse of power and influence. And to get an idea of just how much of an abuse of power and influence this is, check out this chart. If you look very carefully at it, you'll see very prominent politicians figuring into Mocha's uh, chart here. For instance, right at the top, you have Navdeep Baines, who is a former liberal MP. So take a careful look at this chart. How many former and active Canadian MPs, regardless of political party, can you see in this chart? And can you see a certain leader of an NDP party? Now, if you go down to the third row of this chart, third row, and go to the uh, far left. Now, if you go down to the third row of this chart and go to the uh, far left, I think you'll find someone interesting out of all those MPs. That's right, there's our man, Jagmeet. So Jagmeet Singh, who is a prominent member of this World Sikh organization, which of course is situated in Canada, is calling for sanctions against Indian diplomats. Are we starting to see where we have a conflict of interest here? Now, this is a very big problem. A lot of people are asking themselves, how are we ever going to fix this? Will we be able to smooth out relations with India? The questions we should actually be asking ourselves is how should we alter our relations with India, not how we fix them. Alter. That's what we need to be doing. And this is what led to this whole problem in the first place is the very nature of our relationship. We simply cannot be operating the way we've been operating so far. But hey, at least there's a silver lining to all these cover-ups. I mean, Trudeau didn't just throw the entire country of India under the bus to save his own skin, to create a smoke screen to divert attention away from his $400 million scandal. He did one very positive thing. I will give him credit for this, even though he doesn't deserve it. He formally declared Sammy Dune a terrorist organization. Now this is a positive step in the right direction. This kind of reminds me of the mythical creature, Greek mythology, the Hydra, cut off one head, another grows in its place. Labeling Sammy Dune as a terrorist organization, while it is a positive step, it's kind of a moot point because another one will spring up. They will find a way around this. That's what Canada is. Canada is like this steaming bowl of loopholes. Like everybody always finds loopholes to get around our laws, to get around our customs. And it's ridiculous. But at the very least, we've got this one positive going. It kind of shows that maybe, just maybe Canada has something resembling teeth, that maybe we have a chance against these foreign groups that have nefarious intentions that they're importing into Canada. And speaking of which, I also want to bring up SNM Peel. It's exactly as it sounds. So Anne is in Ned, Ned Flanders, and S N Peel. You can look them up on Twitter. This is another group that many have speculated is a front for Khalistani militants looking to get a foothold into Canada. So that's just one of the negative aspects that NSN Peel brings to Canada. It is also an ardent fighter for illegal immigration. They, like we were just talking about loopholes, these guys are masters at it. They work together and they find every conceivable way to get around our immigration laws and they know how to ban people together. So I am hoping, I've reached out to one MP, I'm not going to name him yet because I don't want everybody watching this to lay a whole bunch of pressure on him. I'm hoping that maybe 
he can start getting the ball rolling so that we can do to NSN Peel what the government has just done with Sammy Dune. Could it be possible that we could actually get people saying, make Canada boring again? It almost sounds like the right solution to all these problems. Anyhow, this has been the first episode with the new format. If you hated this, let me know in the comments. If you liked it, please subscribe. It'll help encourage the growth of the channel. I'll see you in the next one. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.